Okay, so today's big idea will be we're going to talk about Google Plus, the social network from Google. Now, the biggest social network in terms of numbers and fame is pretty much Facebook, which we're covering next week. But what's the most popular, popularly visited website in the world, do you think? Google.com, Google Search, that's the most popular website in the world. The second most or third most or so is around Facebook. So the purpose of Google.com is what, would you say? Why do people go to Google.com? To search, to find something, to look for answers, local, net, uh, local businesses, etc. Well, Facebook has climbed very high up to be one of the most popular websites in the world. What you can do on Facebook is chat with friends and family, look at the latest uh, you know, movies and all of that, and also search for businesses and companies and brands. If you haven't done so uh, consciously, you probably did it unconsciously, on Facebook you liked a, uh, a business on Facebook or you searched a business in Facebook and you found the information about it. Well, Google saw this and saw that people are spending a lot of time on Facebook and using it like a search engine, using it to find businesses, using it to find things. And Google's main business is a website where you search and find things. So they decided, let's make our own social network to combat Facebook to get that market share that we may be losing. So they have they built Google Plus in around 2012, I think, around there, 2011, 12, 13, around there. And so the purpose is share content, personal or business, find companies, interact with content, follow accounts. That sounds exactly like Twitter. That sounds exactly like Facebook. That sounds exactly like Pinterest. All the social networks have these basic concepts now. At one point I think they were a little more differentiated, but now they're kind of starting to meld together simply because of the snowball, the 800-pound gorilla that is Facebook. It's become so popular. I can share pictures. I can find businesses. I can watch videos on Facebook. Well, you can do that on Twitter, on Pinterest, on Google+, on all the networks, basically. So Google didn't want to lose that audience of people hanging out on Facebook all day long, so they made their own social network, Google+. But they also... Ha it, al it also has a strong integration with other Google products. Google products. Google.com for search. Google Mail, also known as Gmail. Google Maps. Uh, what other Google products are there? Does anyone have an iPhone? What's the opposite of the iPhone? An Android phone. Google Android. They own your operating system on your phone. There's also Google Maps, Google Mail, um, what's that? Photos, Google Photos, Picasa, all of that stuff. And um, it's all integrated together. If your business is on Google+, Plus, it may be more accessible or easily more accessible in the other Google products. That's a big advantage because Google Plus is free. And Google.com is still the most popular search engine. So, with a Google Plus business listing, we can get faster. Um, we can get found found via local search easier. We can see this activity in just a moment, but when you search, 
sometimes you get results of businesses that stand out more than other businesses. That is a Google Plus business page that we can set up for free. Let me show you that example actually. Oh, and then another Google product, Google Chrome, the web browser that lots of people use. That's a Google product as well. So the Google reach is very far. So if I go to google.com and I search for like Italian food near me. I get results, some that look like they're on the map. Maybe I ignore those and I look elsewhere. If you were to see this, how many of you would ignore this? Raise your hand. A few people. If you were to see this, how many of you would not ignore it? A few people. You may ignore it, perhaps, because I may think it's an ad. They paid for it. And we're kind of getting trained or getting used to that there's a lot of ads on websites all over the place. And I search on the search engines, and I get ads all over the place. And if they pay for it, well, they cheated. They're at the top. And that is true to some degree. This particular thing right here, however, is not an ad. This is related to a Google local business, a Google Plus page, a page where Ben Koto created a listing on Google Plus and they got a little preferential treatment for free. This is our goal for Google Plus, to create a page, especially if we're local, so that we get found on a map and have this preferential treatment, this spotlight that will hopefully guide people to our business. And yes, there's going to be some amount of audience that thinks this is an ad, I'll ignore it because I hate ads, and there's some amount of people that won't, Yes? No, it may vary. It, it, it may vary on various factors because of the size, uh, the number of reviews and all of that. Uh, four, three is less, but it's not always in alphabetical order. So Google Plus has these listings that we can um, tap into for free. That's the point of the um, Google Plus. Notice how people can also review. Reviews are very important nowadays. There's so many businesses out there, so much competition. So if people can review and comment and opine about your business in a positive way especially, that's useful. Now people may say, well, those are fake. They bought them. Um, they asked their friends and family to give a five-star review. That is true to various degrees. Even if you take a re the number of reviews by half, 130 divided by 2 is uh, 75? 65? OK, uh, is that 65 fake reviews? What about half of 65? 32 and a half. Are 32 reviews fake? So the more reviews there are out there, the more true these are. If there are seven reviews, OK, I can find seven friends to give me five stars. Can I find 130 friends? Can I pay for 130 um, reviews? Maybe, but the system is getting smarter and smarter to weed out the fake reviews. So if I entice reviews, and I can show them off here, this is another way to show, come to my business. I have reviews. Real people are reviewing and saying it's a good business. Some amount will be fake. Some amount you've asked your friends and family, but hopefully as you use Google+, Plus to build these reviews, that's going to be very useful for you. Review sites. So purpose of Google Plus. A quote-unquote premium listing on Google search. Maybe I shouldn't use the word premium. That often uh, means the word, you know, like paid. 
we're not we're not going to pay for this at all. We're going to say a spotlight listing. Listing on Google search results. A place for people to review your business. What's the other big famous review site? Yelp. 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 People use Yelp. It's been around a while. Google said, we need that as well. So here's a place where people can review. And if you've got an Android device, you know these things are or just about any device, but these are so smart, they're also so scary. Because I can drive around, I go to a business, and then it says, oh, you seem to be at uh, you know, Toys R Us. Would you like to review Toys R Us? So then I put five stars, and that's how those add up right there. Um, if you're on the iPhone, you get a different kind of version of that, but it's these things are, you know, uh, on, on, on the surface, they're trying to help us deeper levels. It's a deeper discussion. But uh, here is... Google product in my pocket, a Google product. Uh, it knows where I'm at. It might show me a map of the store. It may then ask me to review the location. You may have never done it. You may never have any inclination to do it. You may have it completely turned off except to make phone calls. But lots and lots and lots of people have it on in a way that they're constantly interfacing with it five-star review here, I checked into that business, I didn't like it, I'm going to write a bad comment. And all of that is on Google+, Plus, which we can have full access to as a marketing tool. As we talked about last week also, we use social media for business as a marketing tool. A place for you as the owner to reach your audience. If you're trying to reach an audience, uh, you can market via Google+, via Twitter, via Instagram, all those networks. And the most popular website in the world, Google.com, it might be a good idea to try to reach an audience that way. Because Google+, Plus is integrated, has been integrated with the various Google properties. If you see uh, on Gmail, if you have Gmail, you might see a person's um, face next to their name and other people don't have it. That's often because the person has set up a Google Plus or the business has set up a Google Plus and then they have the full listing. They have their picture by their name, they have their phone number and address. And if I never set up Google Plus, well, it's just going to be the blank face. So again, more reason to, to use the free Google Plus for business. Yes? Um, Yelp, sometimes um, Yelp will block reviews if you're not a regular reviewer. Does Google Plus do that same thing? I believe so. Uh, that's in an effort to try to keep out that spam because I may have a customer that comes to my restaurant and I say, you know, uh, if you enjoyed our, our food, please go on Google Plus and give us five stars. Well, in, in order to help prevent the spammers, Yelp and Google Plus and other review sites filter out reviews that from those that may have only one review that they just created it to give a good star because they feel that skews the results. If a person is not an active user of Yelp or Google Plus, their opinion, the most direct way to say it is, might not count as much. But if you're active and you review sites on a regular basis, your reviews are worth a little bit more. So you might have um, you might have gotten that pop-up that said review this business and you just ignore it. Well it may be hurting you in that it's showing that you're not interested or you're serious about using Google Plus so your opinion won't, won't count as much. So in order to uh, take advantage of all of this all we need to do is create a, a business Google Plus. And you may already have a version of it for personal. Google Plus has personal and business accounts. Like Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Instagram, one of the ones that doesn't, unlike 
Twitter. Twitter doesn't differentiate between um, business and personal accounts. You can go off to Twitter, create a brand new account, business personal, no difference. Um, most other networks do differentiate. You can use Facebook for personal, for fun, for frivolous things, legitimate things. You can use Facebook for business, for marketing, professional things. You can do that for Google+, for Pinterest, for LinkedIn, for Instagram, for many networks. Twitter, Twitter is a little different in that regard. The terminology often is personal profile versus business page. Very generic words, and I'm going to stumble upon them too, even though I've been doing it for years. But personal profile for business and business page for business. Profile for personal and page for business. I might say, let's visit or let's go to my business profile. Technically, that's not right, but again, it's very easy to confuse the two words. I can say, let's go to my personal page. Well, technically, it's a personal profile. And we'll try to use the right terms, but I'll slip up also. Personal profile for you as a person, business page for your business, for your brand, for your product. As I said previously also, I'm using the terminology shorthand of business and product and all of that. But all of this of social media applies to whatever you're trying to do online. If I'm a nonprofit organization and I just want to do outreach, this also applies. You don't have a product, but you still want a business page. I may be an artist that I want to show off my work. I'm not trying to sell it, but I just want people to see my work. I would still want a business page. So anything you're trying to do besides for personal purposes should be a business page. They also call it a brand page. Because people say, it's not a business. I don't, I don't have a business. Well, an AKA brand page. Why differentiate? Differentiate. The business page has more features compared to personal like getting found on that Google search, <clears throat> being on that map. <clears throat> that doesn't happen for personal <clears throat> um, profiles. If you want your business to, the, to appear on the map, you want a business page. If you want reviews, you want a business page. If you want to manage like opening and closing times, you want a business page. You don't get those things from personal. The person doesn't have hours, uh, so to speak. The business does. So we want a business page. You can create a personal profile and then add as many uh, business pages as you want. So I have this uh, personal account, which then I will open the business account for. They started to relax that a bit in that you can create the business one directly, but I find that the trouble with that is that one email is tied to one business, which makes sense, but I think it's more powerful, more useful to have a personal profile first and then activate the business page. And I like that better because you can create multiple business pages connected to one email. So with the one email that I have, I log in and I can manage multiple businesses. For me, as I said previously, I teach these concepts, but I'm also part of a business, PMD Interactive. And we do social media for clients. We do websites for clients. All the things that I teach for free in my classes, uh, we get hired to do this. So for us, in my business, uh, we create a page uh, for people from our personal account and then we can manage it 
my personal content on my personal Google Plus does never mix with the business accounts. They're always separate. There's no, uh, there's no way to know that Victor created John's pet shop. It's completely separate, but I'm just using the one login to, to log in to manage it. So we'll do one email, personal or business email, to create and manage multiple business pages. A business page can have multiple managers. Last week I mentioned TweetDeck for you to be able to have multiple people manage the one Twitter account. For a long time, one email address, one password was used to manage a Twitter account. So if there were seven people in my business that were going to tweet, everyone needed to know that email and everyone needed to know that password. And that was a security liability. Seven people doesn't mean everyone has perfect cybersecurity practices. Uh, TweetDeck for Twitter last week is a way for people to log in with their own emails and that's and their own passwords for better security. This is built in right to Google Plus and we'll see it in Facebook and the other networks that um, everyone can log in with their own credentials, their own email and password and manage the business. That's more secure when people have their own when people have their own business when the people have their own logins. Yes. In the parentheses where you say one email, mm -hmm. did you mean to say personal or business? Personal or email. A uh, personal or business email, yes. <clears throat> so we're going to take a moment to create this together in just a moment. But this is a, a big overview of Google+. It's helpful for uh, getting a leg up on Google Search. It has many uh, tools at our disposal, very useful. And the great thing about it is that it's free, so we're going to set it up in just a moment. There seems to be one space right here. One space right over here. Yes. Or uh, over there, sorry. Over there, that's fine. Yeah. Question in the back? I saw someone's hand up there a moment. No. Yes. So tweet deck is the phrase that you use, mm -hmm. and that's referring to the multiple managers. That's so, for Twitter. Right. It's one of the yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so are the demographics still skewed for tech savvy emails, or has it changed a lot? These um, various social networks, people always want to know right away about who uses them, what are the demographics. And we can find various articles and data to kind of show who's using the networks. But really, I subscribe to the notion that everyone does, and I can show you data for that as well. Um, we can find uh, the audience that we're looking for on any network. But just as a, as a quick note here, traditional audience demographics for the different networks. Uh, Pinterest traditionally has been a female audience. That of course doesn't mean I can't find the male audience that I'm looking for for my products. Google Plus was often a uh, male audience. Techie Techie audience. Instagram, quote unquote, young. However, that is defined. Again, the problem with trying to say, well, I'm, I'm going to go to Google Plus because I know males are there. Well, males are in Pinterest and Instagram and Facebook and everywhere. Maybe there's more of a larger demographic there, but your particular audience may be found. On Instagram, maybe I'm looking for people that are interested in, you know, financial advice. Oftentimes, young people are not quite interested in financial advice. That's something for later. But I may find the audience uh, interested in financial advice on Instagram, even though they're not 
it's not that demographic. So uh, I try not to kind of focus on this is this audience, this is that audience. Because then when you get to some of these other networks like Facebook, what's the audience for Facebook? Everyone. With 1.8 billion people on Facebook, not million, billion, with 1.8 billion people on Instagram, the audience there literally is everyone. Um, for a long time, it was young people. It was college students. Facebook started off as only a network at Harvard. Then it expanded to other universities. Then it expanded to high schools. Then it expanded to the regular people. Then it expanded to businesses. So you can't say what the Facebook demographic is anymore, and you, you'll find plenty of articles out there that are saying the young people are leaving Facebook en masse. Maybe, but maybe that's not my audience. Maybe they're going after the newfangled thing, Snapchat. Maybe that's going to be hot until businesses get on, in, on Snapchat, and then it's not hot anymore, so they'll move elsewhere. Maybe the female audience started out of Pinterest very well. Maybe it still dominates, but maybe because there's so many networks out there, it doesn't matter. It's... This class is a, is a survey of seven of the most popular ones. You'll figure out where is your audience, how to use the network most effectively if you like to use it, and then you'll figure out where your audience is. So it doesn't matter if you see a, a new blog post that says, you know, Instagram now the, the most popular people are 20 to 22 year olds. Well, it doesn't matter. I've built 5,000 followers on Instagram, and they're the followers that care about my product. Don't focus too much on demos, demographics. You'll find your audience where you look. With caveats. The caveats, of course, were like when we were talking about last week about the searching and uh, keywords uh, on Twitter. We did that exercise where you search for the keywords of what your business is and you found hundreds of tweets, hundreds of people, dozens of people about your topic. We can do that, we can do that searching and various techniques that we did last week on Google Plus this week and next week for Facebook, and when we learn something new for Facebook, we can do that to some degree back on Twitter, back on Google+, forward to Pinterest. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is create the account here, and uh, you're free and you're recommended to do it here together with, with me, or you can do it at home on your own computer if you'd like. These computers have deep freeze, which uh, means they will erase when you restart them. So if you've logged in and uh, you forgot to log out, before I leave, I turn off all the computers uh, or the class after me, and your information gets erased. So if you don't want to do it here in our public computers, you can do this at home. Let's go to your web browser, and let's go to the address plus.google.com. plus.google.com This sort of welcome screen here on Google Plus is the um, one of their one of their other selling points that we'll get to eventually. These are called collections. This is content by people or businesses. We'll explore this a little bit more deeply a little bit later once we've set it up. But plus.google.com is one address where I can go to sign in or sign up for this account. So you can see either join Google Plus on the left or sign in. If you already have a Gmail email address, this will be easier to do. If you don't, we'll have to create an account and um, it takes a couple of steps. So if you don't have a Gmail, you can click Join Google Plus. It'll still say, OK, sign in here. If you don't have a Gmail, there's Create an Account. You may have a Gmail already. You may have 
a Google account already. You, a few years ago, were, you can still do it, but it, it was very common to create a, a Google account with my email, let's say from Cox or from AT&T. Maybe I've got my AT&T email address and a, a, a year ago I created a Google uh, a Gmail or, or a Google Maps account or something. It's all related. Google Search, Gmail, Maps, YouTube, uh, Google Play, Google Chrome. Maybe if you log into your Google Chrome with your Cox email address, well technically you have a Gmail account. So take a moment to either sign in with your existing email if you don't have one. You may have forgotten the password, try to retrieve it, or if you don't have one, there's create. We'll take a moment for you to do one of those, either sign in or sign up. If you're going to sign up, you get this screen. It says create an email with Gmail. I'd rather use victor.com, my email, so I can do this. I prefer to use my email. People then ask, should I use my personal? email or my business email. It doesn't really matter. Uh, as I said uh, a little while ago, you can use one email, personal or business, to then create multiple Google Plus business listings, business pages. So it's really up to you. Um, I'm going to give everyone just a moment to sign in or sign up. I already have an account, so I'm going to sign in with it. Try to sign in. If you're having trouble, call me over, but just try to sign in for a moment. Now we saw last week when we were setting up the Twitter account, uh, some of us weren't able to fully set it up because Twitter said, why are there 30 people creating a Twitter account in one room? It must be a, spa uh, a hacker's hive. So uh, I think here, if anyone's having a little bit of trouble, call me over. We might have the same issue in that there's a lot of people signing in at the same time. <coughs> So either sign in or sign up. If you said if you sign in, you'll probably see different screens than me. It's it's difficult. It's always a little difficult at the beginning of the day to um, show exactly. Remember to mute your devices, please. It's always difficult to show people exactly what to do the very first time, simply because everyone is such on a different boat. Maybe you've already got the account. You just want to learn how to use it. 
maybe you've never used it before, maybe you need to create the account, it's going to look a little bit different to, for everyone, but hopefully we'll be on the same page. Any trouble signing in or signing in? So once you either log in or create an account for, for some of us, it may be very direct. For some of us, it might take a couple of steps. Uh, eventually, you might see a screen that might say like a big welcome message with let's go, something like that. Um, well, eventually, this signs us in. And as I said, that with Google+, Plus, like other networks, there's personal and there's business accounts. On the top right corner, I have a, a graphic here. You might just have a little blank face. But if you click on that graphic on the top right corner next to the bell, that's your account, your account picker, your account switcher. In my case, when I click there, it shows I have this profile and I have various other than brand or business pages. So I'm using one login to then manage different accounts. Victor's Bakery, Victor's Tech. You probably don't see that because you've never set it up. That's our next goal. The first step, the first goal is to sign in or sign up and then create business pages. Because maybe you never want to use the personal profile. That's fine. You don't need to. I want to use it for business. This is what I said earlier about um, one email address can be used to create and manage multiple business pages or brand accounts, whatever the, the term they're using at the moment. Um, then you can have multiple managers. So basically our step is, steps are uh, create or sign in to a Google Plus personal account and then switch to the business page to manage it. And managing it is sharing the picture, a link, replying to customers, reviews that's another reason to set this up people are gonna review you and you don't have to have created the page for people to start to review you the page may already exist and people are starting to review you and you have these two-star reviews because people were complaining and you never knew 
So another reason to set this up, to log into it, is to, is to see those reviews. And uh, I'm going to, to put a pin in it for the moment. I'll say right here, TBA, I'm going to come back to this, notes on Google Plus reviews. I'm going to come back to that. If I don't remember, remind me. But we're going to talk about that. Uh, the value and importance of Google Plus reviews in a little bit. <clears throat> so when you go home, after we learn all of this about Google Plus, this is going to be your process. You go back to plus.google.com. You have some login, so you log in with it, and then you're going to switch over to your business because you want the business account as soon as possible instead of the personal. It has some limitations. The personal. Hey. Well, they'll all have a picture. It's just that I haven't set a picture to my businesses yet. To confirm that also, you should have it say profile, because profile is the keyword for a person. Mm -hmm. Yes, question. Um, no, if that would make sense to do that, and we're going to do it in a moment, but this would make sense. I'm going to add a new account for my business, but no, that's actually sort of like tying different email addresses together. We don't really want that. We want to create the brand page. I'll show us how in just a moment. Because I've already set it up. I can see this easily. My personal and my businesses, and I can manage them here. But because everyone here is probably new, you don't see all your brand accounts. You see, add an account, that's, that's not what we want. Okay. I saw another hand, maybe? Someone else? No? Okay. So, I want to get out of this personal one and start to deal with my business one. After you set up at least one, you'll be able to switch between them easily and manage more than one. But the first time, they've made this harder, unfortunately. It used to be pretty easy to create these business pages very quickly, and now it's kind of hidden. It's annoying. I don't know. Maybe they're doing it on purpose so that not every spammer can create uh, a business account. I don't know. So for us, I'll show you how it's done, and I'll write it in the notes. But what you want to do after you've signed in, then type the address on the address bar, business.google.com, business.google.com. You won't get much out of this page until you've signed in. So we've already signed in on plus.google.com, and then now we'll go to business.google.com, business.google.com. So here, because it may be the first business I'm going to create, you'll get a little spiel here about show people you're open for business. Get your business hours, phone number, directions on search and maps with Google My Business. And there'll also be a phone number there that you can talk to people, you know, real people to fully set this up. So this is telling you, set up one of these accounts and you'll get on a map, you'll have hours of operation, you'll have people being able to review you, all that good stuff that I'm talking about. So business.google.com, I guess the other address is google.com slash business. Either or, they both seem to work. So we'll say set up and manage business or brand pages at google.com slash business or business.google.com. I'll click Start Now. Again, all of this is free. I get a map. Yes? Exactly, we need to deal with that. So some of us, how many of you would have a business that would appear on a map? Raise your hand. A few people. How many of you might have a business that you don't want to appear on a map? A few people. Okay, so we have both of those abilities. We have the ability to add a business onto a map, 
But if I'm running my business out of my garage, I don't, I don't want that. So let's deal with that. If you've got a business at a real location, you obviously want to fill all of this in, and your real address and phone number and all of that. And then it will want to verify that that's your business. There is, uh, there are going to be some verification steps that it will ask you for on the next steps. It may call you at your business. It may send you a postcard in the mail to verify you're trying to claim a business that exists on Main Street. Let's confirm that it's you and not your competitor. Question. So you mentioned if you don't want to be on a map, don't fill this out. But should you fill out maybe San Diego and not no. address? Or? No, it will want you to fill in a whole address. So if I'm running this out of my out of my bedroom and I don't want my house address on this. We have a different way to do this. Let me make a note here. If you have a physical location, add your business to the map. If you don't, so let's say you're a, you're a service or a consultant consultation business or if I'm a plumber I go to people's houses but I don't have an office if you don't you have to follow these other steps here this is what I was saying that they that they've changed this a little bit more complicated unfortunately what you need to do if you don't have a physical location Click on the three dot, the three line menu on the top left here, next to Add Your Business. That's the main menu. You're still going to go to business.google.com, but then click on three line menu. That's the main menu at the top left. Click on that, and then go to Support. Click on the online menu, click support. This support box pops up. There's various very valuable things here that you may still need. Add or claim your business. So again, you may have already been getting reviews. And I want to claim that account to deal with the review. So you might want to read that at some point. What we want add a brand page Okay, actually it's going to be easier just to type brand page. In the search box here, type brand page. One of the results should be create a brand page. I thought Google search was smart, but I guess we have to do brand page. Um, yes? On setting up the page, um, I'm a real estate agent and I work for uh, that's a question really for you to answer. Do you have the authority to manage that page for that big company? That's what that's asking you. So if you don't, you might not want to do it. If you do, this is saying you're, you're going to get then full access to the listing on Google Plus for that business. So you may want to hold off on that. Uh, what I will say is, like with Twitter, we created a Twitter account. I created one that was completely fake. I put in a fake email. I just did it completely fake. With Google+, I can create multiple brand pages and then delete them later once I'm finished with them. I sort of recommend that we will do that in just a moment as well here. You may have a real business listing. I sort of recommend still to create uh, a page like us in a moment called temporary Victor's Bakery. You know, some fake 
temporary page where I can learn how it works, make mistakes, and then when I'm more confident with it, then actually create it for real with these same steps. Question? Once to verify my business through a mailing that'll come to the business, mm -hmm. can I still create a brand page while it's doing this verification? You can, process? yeah. You can just go back to this screen here, do the search like I did here, and then create a brand page temporarily while you wait for the real listing. I'm searching for brand page and then create, click create a brand page on Google. So once you search that and click it, you'll get an article that explains what, <coughs> what this is. You'll explain what this is and how to uh, how to do it if you scroll down. You'll see a section to create your brand page. Number one, go to the page creation portal. So click on that one where it says to create a brand page. Page creation portal. Number one. You have to scroll down a little bit. It's the first bullet point number one. Okay, here we go. You want this kind of screen. Perhaps there's a much easier address or a much easier way to get to it. There used to be one. One of the ways that I found that works is this way. Doing search, I mean doing help and searching for brand page, finding the answer, clicking the link, there might be a faster way, but at least the first time that we then create this, then we will be able to much easier go to up our, our menu there and we will see Manage Pages. For the first time, create your Google Plus page for your business. Here's where we can set this up. If, you know, if I'm a realtor, I don't have an office. If I'm a web designer and I go to people's locations, this is the one I would want. Page name. Again, temporary Victor's Bakery. All of this can be changed. Maybe I decide to keep it. I can change this. Since I'm doing this as a fake account, I'm just going to put a fake name. If you're doing this for a real account, you could, but I recommend for the purposes of the class just to make something up. If this were my real address, then I would, uh, I mean my real Google Plus, then I would um, put in a web address here. And the type of page, there's not a lot to choose from, there's no really wrong answer. We've got product or brand, like a business, entertainment, community, and other. Whatever one of these applies, you can select it. Question. No, if you have a website, you would put that address there. I'm making it up because it's a fake business listing that I'm creating. Oh, but if so I had... The purpose of this is that if uh, someone wishes to visit your, your website, your home page, they would click there. So if you, if you have a website, you can list it. If you don't, you wouldn't put anything. So then you have to click the I agree to the page terms. Uh, the page terms, you can click and read them there. Those are the things that no one reads, but everyone agrees to. Uh, you can do so. Basically, it's going to say you, you agree to not abuse Google+, Plus. you won't hack accounts, you're not going to harass people, you're, gonna, you're not going to do or sell illegal things, all of that standard stuff. So you put the name of your page, you can put spaces, capital letters. This is like the full name that we saw on Twitter. This is the one with spaces and symbols and capitals that is not unique. On another screen, we would choose the username, the one unique address that only one person in the world, one business in the world can have. Like on Twitter, you could put your website to drive more traffic back to your website. And then create.
you may get this verification again because the in the effort to constantly combat spam we have to do some more verifications uh, I'm going to put a phone number here to get a quick text message to confirm I'm a real person, not a spammer. Or steps have been to do that search to find the right screen to click create and then go through the process of creating the account. <coughs> Eventually, hopefully, then you get uh, the screen. There's your profile. It's very basic. We'll need to set that up properly in a little bit. You created the business. There's various screens here that we need to know what they're about. But all the networks have very similar screens. What we're going to do is take our first break, uh, and then we'll we'll see what Google Plus is and how to, how to use it before we take our break. If you manage to create the account like me here, now what I'd like you to do is click on your icon on the top right. It may be a logo, it may be a blank, it doesn't matter, but click on your icon on the top right corner and click sign out. Because I want to show you from the beginning and close the browser. If you're going to do this at home, we did it together, it worked perfectly, perhaps. You do it at home and suddenly it's different. So I want to take a moment, once you've set it up, to actually then sign out close your browser and when we come back after the break remember to mute your devices please after we take the break then we'll come back and then we'll see well how do I get back into it because it's very easy to forget some of these little steps it's 1040 we'll take a break until 1050 and then we'll continue with Google Plus if you have any trouble call me over